Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be working on the uh, JLB Cheetah Gen 1. And in the previous video, I had a blast bashing this thing. It was super duper fun. But then, you know, when you're bashing, stuff happens. Stuff breaks. So yeah, let's, uh, let's recap from the previous video. If you guys saw the previous video. If not, I'll put a link in the description to that previous video. Or... A link up here somewhere but uh, yeah let's uh let's continue with this so there's a lot of projects that's going to be going into here first rebuilding the uh, shocks second taking off these drive shaft and hammering it back i can buy a replacement part but i'm not going to because it's just a waste of money it's gonna bend the same way as this original part they also have an upgraded part, which I have on my Generation 2 Cheetah, and that one bend too, so there's no point in buying the replacement part when you can just take this off and hammer it back. I've done that a couple times already, and it's been flawless. So that's the second project. Uh, third project is going to be the motor mount. So I crashed. I crashed head on into a rock trying to do a jump. I didn't know it was there, but when I crashed the rock, it made a noise back here and I thought the slipper clutch came loose or the pinion gear came loose. But when I took this apart, I found out that the motor mount was the thing that broke. So here's the motor mount and you can see right there, it's bent right there. And this top part too is kind of bent right there. So when I'm trying to line up the motor, it, it doesn't line up. And there was like some sort of little play like this. So I couldn't get it to mesh up right. So what I'm thinking of doing, I'm going to try this. Instead of buying a new motor mount, I'm just going to take my Dremel and cut off this bent part. Just shave it down. Same with this side. I'm just going to shave it down, put it back in, and see how it goes from there. So that's the third thing. The fourth thing is retaping this back to the chassis. Fifth thing I'm going to do is take out the center drive shaft. Yeah, I'm going to take out the center drive shaft just to show you guys, the viewers, how to take off the center drive shaft. And that's basically it with this truck. So in today's video, we're going to be working on the, uh, the shocks. I'm going to take it apart. I'm going to show you guys how to deal with the the shock cap on top right here because this is known to be super duper stubborn and it won't come off. A lot of people have trouble with this. Somehow the factory like over tightened these, this one, as well as the O-ring cap. So I'm going to show you a trick on how to take it off. So yeah, it's going to be a series of videos on this whole repair, but uh this one here it's all about the shocks so let's do it all right first thing you want to do take off this screw here and take off this nut on all four that's it and then the shocks come off and if you have power tools use it because it it makes it even faster to do this repair Not sure if you guys could see that, but this screw that's holding the uh, the shock is bent. So I'm gonna take it out and try to hammer it back straight. Man, look how horrible that is. It's so like bent. So I'm gonna have to take off this body post, these two screws, in order to get to the back and take all four off. This one, this one, and the two in the back. They're all coming off. I'm gonna to try to make it straight again. All right, so all four shocks are now off. They're right there. And then the screws up here on the shock tower that's holding the upper shocks, the, the top part, here they are. They're, yeah, they're, they're pretty bent. So I'm gonna to try to tap it back with the hammer 
and then go from there. But for now, I'm just going to put this to the side with all the other stuff. And we're going to work on this. Alright, so here we go. So, how do you take this off? The top part and this O-ring cap. And the best way to take it off that I find useful is a soldering iron. Well, first let me disassemble this and then I'll show you what I mean. It's easy as that. Alright, so you got the shocks taken apart. Well, the springs off the shocks. Now, this is what I do. I take the soldering iron, you plug it in, you make sure this thing is hot. And usually with the soldering iron, there's something for it to sit on because it's hot. And in this case, all I do is I let it sit on here just like that as long as it's touching this thing will heat up and it'll be super easy to take off like super easy I've done this a few times already so trust me guys it's really easy once you heat this up just like that with the soldering iron you do this to up here and then you also do it to down here so you could take off these two because from the factory they're on really tight and if you guys own a JLB you know what I'm talking about all right, so now that I've showed you how to loosen these two, let's uh, let's do this again. I want to show you guys from, from the beginning how to disassemble this whole suspension unit. So you, you want to pull the spring back, get this spring cap off just like that. Take the springs off just like that. Take this cap off. Pour out all the oil that's in here or the old oil so you can see it's kind of black all that dirt and stuff is in there give it a few pumps all right once you've taken the cap off and you emptied out all the oil you're gonna see the c-clip and it's pretty hard to take off if you don't have the proper tool so what I find that works great are these right here these o-ring picks you could get at Harbor Freight for like two bucks or even cheaper. They work great. So I'm gonna use this one here. And then I'm gonna try to just stick it in here and pry it out. There we go, it's in there. Oh it almost came. I don't know if you guys can see that it's coming. It's coming. It's almost there. It's almost there. And there it is. That's how easy that was. There it is. There's the C-clip. It's off. So yeah. Get yourself an O-ring pick. It's only like two bucks. You get a set of four at Harbor Freight. So now that that's off, you can take some pliers. And then just grab it the rest of the way. <laughs> the oil makes it stick. <laughs> ah. Let's just try the O-ring pick again. There you go. There you go. Alright, once you get off the C-clip, now you need to take this thing off. So the best way I do it is... I get as close as I can to here so that way I don't scratch up or damage the shaft. So I'm using one of these wire snippers just to pinch right there and then start twisting this thing off just like that. Boom, done. And now you can slide this cap off. Here's the O-rings, use the pick, gently pull the O-ring out, or just shove this whole thing in like that, boom! Here it is, the piston, here's the shaft, there's the shaft with another C-clip that holds the piston, and then here's that O-ring on the bottom, it fell out. It's not really an O-ring, it's a plastic. Here's the O-ring. Boom, 
room. So it's a plastic wash with the O-ring and then another plastic wash, which is this thing right here. And now you're basically done. I could take this off just like that. Put everything in there, everything in there, everything in there. And that's basically it guys. That's the whole disassembly of the suspension. So I'm gonna clean this up, put it all back together, and then oil it up, and then put it back on the truck, and then drop test the, the truck. And I'm gonna show you guys that. So stay tuned. Okay, so now that we got everything cleaned, everything is clean and not greasy anymore. So it's time to put this back together. So the way I do it is, I start with the piston ring and the shaft. Then I put this C-clip back on. And the best way to put this back on is using some pliers. You gotta be careful, because if you slip, it goes shooting somewhere and then you're gonna lose it. All right, got that on. Now, it goes into the shock body. And then from here, you put in your O-rings. So it starts with the O-ring, and then a plastic washer. Oops, I dropped that one. And then another O-ring, and then another plastic washer. And then you put on this O-ring cap, and then you tighten this back on. So it should look something like this. And then the oil I'm using is 50 weight, which is what I have available. It's the lightest one I've got. And then what I usually do is uh, I just put some on the shaft, put some on the, uh, the O-rings and the washer, move it up and down. Just like that. Put a little bit more on the shaft. Move it up and down. It's kind of like lubricating it. And then you could close this up. So now you're kind of almost done. Just gotta fill this up with some oil now. Boom, just like that. It's all the way up to the top. And what I do is I, I spin the shaft around a little bit, give it a few pumps. Slowly bringing it up. Slowly pulling it down. Spinning it. Just like that, spin it, pump it. Spin it, pump it. You want all the air bubbles to come out of here. Spin it, pump it. Spin it, pump it. Now a little bit more. All right, now you can still kind of see there's like tiny little air bubbles. That needs to come out. So it needs to sit for at least 10 to 15 minutes. And what I usually do is I just let it sit in here, in this thing, just like that. Boom, let me clear that up for you. Just like that. This is a stock wrench that came with one of the uh, RC kits. But yep, just like that, let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes. All right, so once all the air bubble is out, as you can see there, it's pretty clear. I don't see any air bubbles. First, you gotta push this all the way to the top. Try to be careful not to spill anything or 
cause any more air to get in there. You put this cap on. And there you go, nice and tight. And there you have it. It should look like that. It should stay where where you put it. If you want rebound, you can leave it open and then close the cap or put it halfway and then close the cap. And then I'll have some, some rebound coming back. But in my case, I like it the way it is, just like this, where it goes into the position I want it to. Feels good, feels like new now. All right, let's put this together. And you guys are probably wondering like, how come I didn't put a bladder in here? Because originally, this did not come with the bladder and I found that even though I assembled the shocks without the bladder it still did a good job in absorbing the shocks which it's supposed to because they're they're shock absorbers boom there you go like new again all right so that's one down three more to go and then we'll put this on the truck and do a drop test all right here it is suspension all fixed looking all nice and neat let's check out the rear looking all nice and neat and the motor mount is kind of destroyed so I, I put a towel over this so when we do the drop test it's not gonna hurt the motor so let's do it let's try that again Ooh. All right, there you have it guys. So that's how you rebuild the uh, shocks for the JLB Cheetah. Well, that's how I do it. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Make sure to stay tuned and subscribe because I'm gonna be doing a series of videos on the repair on this. Thanks for watching guys, cheers.